for tuning in to the Wing Space podcast. This podcast is not a replacement for mental health treatment or professional health care. In case of crisis or emergency, please contact your local health care provider or dial 911. Hey there, and welcome to the Wing Space podcast, a place to take up space. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you a little bit more on self care and dig just a little bit deeper into some of these ideas. So, I invite you to grab a cup of coffee or a nice big glass of water and have a seat while you take a listen. Our most popular piece of apparel to date is on sale through the end of September. Snag your new favorite long sleeve tee at hopehealingtherapy.com slash shop or use the link in our show notes. Hello and welcome back to the Wing Space podcast. I am coming to you if you're watching via our YouTube channel, the backdrop is going to be a little bit different um, because I am going to take care of myself today while I'm recording this podcast episode for you. Um, I have some notes on a prior blog that I wrote um, that I want to refer to while I'm talking to you today and I am taking care of myself by not rewriting all of that down. So I'm going to just refer to those notes and share some ideas um, and it's just a little easier for me to come to you from this angle. So in episode five, titled Self-Care is Not Selfish, I came to you with three ideas. The first one being self-care is not selfish. Um, The second one is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. And the third one is we cannot take care of others without taking care of ourselves. And this week, um, I saw a reel on Instagram that really had me thinking And it was a picture, maybe a video of a mom, you know, pushing a a stroller and kind of the over overlay of words, um, you know, said something to the effect of a lot of people say that you um, cannot pour from an empty cup, but it's literally what moms do every day. And it really had me thinking and I want to debunk that a little bit. Um, One of the books that we use in therapy with our clients is called Have You Filled Your Bucket Today? And it's a really cool um, children's book and it talks about how you fill your bucket. And I use this example with kids. Um, It's kind of fun because we have a a silver bucket with lots of like um, fuzzy little craft balls and then we talk about filling the bucket and emptying the bucket. But I've used this same description with adult clients as well because If you imagine that we all carry around an imaginary bucket, everyone has the same size bucket. And when other people do for us, then our bucket gets a little bit into it, not filled, but it gets a little bit into it. When we do for other people, we take a little bit out of our bucket, but it also adds a little bit to our bucket because we are called to serve others and we are called to care for our neighbor. So there's this interesting exchange of, um, it takes a little out, but yet it puts a little back in. And then of course, when we do for ourselves, that also fills that bucket. So there's this interesting exchange, right? Of, of our bucket or our cup, however you wanna, um, describe it, this interesting exchange of of energy, so to speak, that's coming in and out as we do for other people, as we do for ourselves, and as others do for us. And as I was looking at this um, reel and I was thinking about this concept that I had just explained to you, I realized that it's all about perception and expectation. All of us have a lens through which we see the world. Um, you've probably all heard the idea that, you know, there's the cup is half full and the cup is half empty kind of folks. And that perspective really does color the way that we see things. So if I am constantly thinking that my cup is empty, then I'm going to feel like my cup is empty. But if I am having a perspective that it's kind of this in and out kind of ebb and flow, and sometimes my, um, my cup, my bucket, um, my energy is a little bit higher and sometimes it's a little bit lower and it just kind of ebbs and flows that I'm going to, I'm going to be able to feel that kind of like ocean waves, right? Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller, but it still keeps going. Um, 
a uh, previous pastor of mine was talking about marriage in one of his sermons one time, and he said that a lot of people think about that, um, you know, marriage is 50-50, and that everyone, you know, that relationship requires one person to give their all to 50% of the relationship, and that the other partner needs to give their all to the, the, um, the relationship for that other 50%. And really, it's not 50-50. Sometimes it's 90-20. Sometimes one person has to give 90% of the energy for the relationship because there's something going on with um, the other partner. They are grieving. They are ill. They have a big project at work. Um, something's going on. And so, you know, sometimes the scales are tipped um, and sometimes it goes the other way. And so it's, you know, 80-20 or... Um, you know, 30, 70, right? So it, it, it ebbs and flows in terms of that relationship. And for us, I think, in terms of our relationship with, um, with our families, with, with the, the world in which we live, um, and our relationship with ourselves, it, it ebbs and flows. Sometimes we have, we have 80% to give. Sometimes we have 100% to give. Sometimes we only have about 20 to give. So who are the people that we're going to then tap into to help fill our bucket in order to be able to to fill that since we only have 20% to give. I hope that makes sense. Um, this is kind of the exact reason why you may have seen on our socials over the weekend um, that we had a self-care retreat for our staff. And this speaks to not only us um, being able to fill ourselves because we took the day to um, step away from stressors. We had fun with our coworkers. We did a few things that kind of take, took care of ourselves, um, some movement, lots of sunshine. Um, we fed and fueled our bodies. We laughed. We um, had some great social interaction. Um, it allowed me to fill them as my staff, and they filled each other by laughing and the interactions that they had. Um, and I also believe that it gives us an opportunity to share with you all, our listeners, our community, the importance of self-care. Um, we are we are helpers, we are doers, we are givers, and um, we have to take care of ourselves in order to be able to take care of the clients and the community that we serve. And so this allowed us to be an example for you as our community that we we have to stop and take care of ourselves too. And it gave lots and lots of examples. And you're going to see on our stories and in some reels in the coming weeks. Um, and, and feel free if you're listening to this after September of 2023 to kind of go back into the history of um, some of our socials and look. And you're going to hear lots of examples from our staff about ways that they take care of themselves. Um, and it's just really important um, for us to be able to um, be an example for that. One of the things that happened over the weekend during our retreat is that we had gone to um, one of the local establishments and we kind of bust our own table. You know, we took our took our drinks up to um, up to the counter and the lady said, you guys don't have to do that. You can you can leave them on the table. We, we'll take care of that. And I said, we're helpers. It's just what we do. And um, one of our coworker, one of my coworkers, said to her, "If there's anything that we can do to make your job a little bit easier, we're willing to do it." Wow, that really <clears throat> was, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of the epitome of what we do. Um, for us, if there's anything that we can do to make your life a little lighter, then we're willing to do that. But in order to do that, we have to make sh make um, sure that our load is not as heavy as um, it might seem. And sometimes we have to just take some of that and set it aside. I mean, certainly I had things that needed to happen on Saturday at my home. I had things that I needed to do in my personal life. But I, I just put that aside. I, I, I set it aside so that I could do what I needed to do in order to take care of my staff and take care of myself. Um, because the other thing that happens is that we end up having unrealistic expectations. Um, we are not expected to be all things to all people at all times 
and do it all. Yet, we often put that expectation on ourselves. And if you can imagine expectations on a 0 to 10 scale, and 0 is no expectation, and 10 is the highest expectation you can imagine, I think sometimes we put ourselves at like 12 or even 15. So way beyond what would be expected of us from other people. We put this huge, huge expectation on ourselves and it's unattainable. Let's, let's just be honest, it's unattainable. So I'm constantly, if I have this super, super high expectation for myself, then my bucket cannot get filled because I can never meet the expectation that I made for myself. And what also happens is that because our expectation is so high for ourselves, that it naturally moves the expectation that we have for other people. So maybe, you know, they're at eight out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 in our book in terms of what we expect from them. So we're constantly frustrated and disappointed with ourselves, blaming ourselves, feeling guilty for not doing all the things. And then we're, disappointed and frustrated with other people because they're not doing what we, we need or want or expect them to do. So when we look at expectations and we set realistic expectations, then that is a form of self-care. It's a form of taking care of ourselves so that we're not constantly feeling disappointed, constantly feeling frustrated, um, and constantly feeling like we have to strive. A lot of this comes from you know, we just want the perfect house, the perfect children, the perfect body, the perfect marriage, the perfect relationships, the perfect everything. And perfect is not attainable. It is, it is not attainable. And we have to be able to realize that there is a good enough standard. We all have seasons of our life. There was a season in my life where, um, Every other Saturday, I woke early and I cleaned my house all day long. It was a six or eight hour ordeal. My house was as spotless as can be. I could tidy over the course of two weeks. And then the next Saturday, that's what I did. My husband worked shift work and every other Saturday he worked day work. So he wasn't home and it felt great, right? I, it was, it was super clean. Um, it was like, I was my own cleaning, um, cleaning company. And then I had children and my husband still worked every other Saturday during the day, but there was no way that I could clean my house for six to eight hours. So I had to change that expectation. I had to change how I was going to take care of my children, how I was going to take care of myself while also being able to take care of our home. And so that changed based on the season that we're in um, at the time. And then as our children grew older, it even changed more because then they could help. They could do things. They had chores. And what ended up happening was that they were not doing the chores the way that I wanted them to do them. It got done, but in not the way that I wanted it. And so I was frustrated and I was disappointed because they weren't loading the dishwasher the way that I would, or they weren't vacuuming the way that I would. I mean, let's be honest. You can vacuum and you can vacuum. The end result is the carpet is vacuumed, right? Just because it's done a little differently doesn't mean that it's not done correctly. So I had to shift my expectations that good enough was okay. Perfection was not necessary because never have I ever in almost 20 years of being married and, and having different seasons of our life, Never have I had someone come to my house and say, oh man, Jen, you, you really should have upped your game. This house is not put together. Sometimes I've said to people, thanks so much for coming over the other day. I'm sorry the house was a mess. And they would say, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because the truth of the matter is we're the only ones that pay attention to those things. Our family, our friends, they're not paying attention to what we think that they are. And so... I invite you to consider lowering those expectations and consider the season that you're in and consider what taking care of yourself looks like based on the season that you're in. Um, in 
2020, so about three years ago, maybe a little even over three years ago, I wrote one of our first blogs for the, the practice. And so I just want to share some ideas that I think are really easy to implement regardless of the season that you're in. So whether you are um, a single person who has um, potentially, you know, lots of flexibility in their schedule or um, a married couple with no children, so you're still looking at different aspects of someone else's schedule. If you have young children, if you have teenage children, if you have older children, you're empty nesters, you're in retirement, regardless of the season that you're in, I truly believe that these next six or seven things that I'm gonna share with you, we can all do. Um, the very first thing, and you, if you've listened to this podcast for a while now, you've heard me say it, the very first thing we can do is we can breathe. Now, we all breathe involuntarily. If you, if you have breath, then you've got life, and, and you're breathing whether you try or not. But often what happens is that we are not breathing efficiently and effectively because we live in a hustle, bustle, go, go, go kind of world. And so our breathing is kind of that hustle, bustle breathing. And you may notice that every now and again, your body stops and takes a huge deep breath. And it feels so good. So I'm going to invite you right now, whatever you're doing, you're walking, you're driving, you're sitting at home, you're cleaning, whatever you're doing right now, I want you to take a big deep breath through your nose, inflate those lungs, make that belly pop out while you're inflating those lungs. And then exhale fully and completely. Now you can do that for about 90 seconds. You can take nine deep breaths. In for five, out for five. In for five and out for five. 90 seconds. I promise you we all have 90 seconds. You can also use the four, seven, eight technique. I love this technique. Um, Dr. Weil developed this. You breathe in for four through your nose, you hold it for a count of seven, and you exhale for a count of eight. You see, holding it in between allows that oxygen to circulate throughout our body, and it allows the oxygen to get to all the places that it needs to be. It gathers up the impurities, and then when we exhale more than we inhale, we're getting rid of that stuff. So the very first thing that you can do to take care of yourself is to breathe. We can do this preventatively. We can do this every day throughout the course of the day take lots of opportunities to take deep breaths we can also use this as an intervention things start to get stressful stop and breathe stop and breathe there are um, there have been times when i have been in a crisis situation and i have had someone say jen i need your help the very first thing i say to them is breathe and sometimes i'll have them look me in the eye and we breathe together. And now their breath may be faster and their breath may be more shallow than mine, but ultimately we get to that nice, deep, slow breath. You gotta breathe. We all have it, regardless of the season that you're in. We all have the opportunity to take a couple, couple of deep breaths. Maybe it's 60, maybe it's 90 minutes. The next thing you can, you can do, and this is so simple, but we just don't think about it. You can go outside. You can go outside. Being exposed to the sun is the only way that our body can naturally get vitamin D. You can get it from other sources. You can get it through fortified vitamins and milk. But the only way that we can truly get it is by being in the sun. Now I know people are saying, what about sunscreen? It's okay. If you you're, you're going to need to put it on. You're going to need to protect your skin. But you can also be out in the sun. You can also be in the shade, but still outside, right? Sitting on your couch in your living room is very different than sitting on a chair or a bench on your front or back porch under an, a shade awning. So I invite you to step outside. Maybe you do some 
what I consider habit stacking and you put them together. You walk outside, you take those nice deep breaths while you're outside. You're taking a few minutes to look around at nature, you're getting sunshine, you're getting fresh air, and you're getting those breaths in. We can all do that. Sometimes it's just a matter of acknowledging what we're doing as an opportunity for self-care. You walk your children to the bus stop in the morning. You're outside. You're standing outside. Instead of the hustle and the bustle of, come on, let's go, let's go, what's the next thing I have to do, looking at your to-do list, scrolling on your phone, just sit and observe. Take those deep breaths while you're standing at the bus stop with your kids. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the opportunity for fresh air. We can all do it, regardless of the season that you're in. Even if you are a person who is unable to propel themselves outside, ask someone, will you help me go outside? Help me go to the porch. Help me go to the driveway. If you're a person who's caring for someone who's not able to go out by themselves, take them and go together and enjoy that sunshine. The next idea is to meditate. And I know, you know, that word gives a lot of people kind of some cringe. Um, there's a, a TED talk and I apologize, but I do not know the gentleman's name, but if you TED talk, um, you know, 10 minutes of meditation, you're going to come up with this, this YouTube video. And, and the guy, um, he has an, uh, an English accent, I believe. And it's a, a really 10 minute video about meditation. And he basically says that when someone told him about meditation, he was, exp he was immediately thinking, you know, Tibetan monks, um, you know, with their legs in an interesting pretzel shape, um, you know, their fingers on their knees and they were humming the whole time. Well, that certainly is a form of meditation that, that that particular culture uses. But meditation is really an opportunity to become aware of our thoughts and to become aware of the physical sensations in our body. And it's an opportunity to turn off and to um, pull away from all of the outside influences. So maybe you have some soft music playing, maybe you don't, maybe it's just quiet, but you're not, not on your phone, you're not on your computer, you're not on any kind of electrical device, you're not talking with other people, you're not engaging in the world, you're just sitting you're breathing and you're just allowing some space to come through um, your head, maybe starting to become aware a little bit about what's happening um, in your head. You're thinking about your thoughts, making some space for things and you're breathing. Now, I can tell you right now, you can do all three of these things at once. You can sit on the porch in the sunshine for 10 minutes and do a little meditation, a little bit of quiet time for yourself. Boom, that's three of those things done. Now I said breathing for 90 seconds and I'm telling you to meditate for 10. Maybe you just meditate for 90 and then you slowly find opportunities to increase that, right? It's about putting things into your daily life that works for you, that you see as self-care. Because if I say, well, I don't have time for that, then I'm not going to have time for that. I'm not going to make time for that. But if I say, oh, you know what? In the morning, when I'm standing on the porch watching my dog use, you know, the morning routine, I'll take my coffee and I'll stand on the porch and I'll watch him take some deep breaths and get some sunshine. It's a great opportunity for me. Reframing it. Different perspective change the lens through which we see the world. The next idea is to treat yourself like you treat other people. Now, I mentioned in the previous podcast and I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast that we have to take care of ourselves in order to take care of other people because if we're not taking care of ourselves, we, we're, we're no good to the others, right? We have nothing to give. So you treat yourself like you would treat other people. Think about this. Do you ever... Um, make a cup of coffee for your spouse before you go to work? Do you make your lunch for your kids before they go to school? Um, do you make sure that your, your kiddos have a snack when they come home from school? Do you have a little treat for after dinner or um, 
you know, invite your kids to go play with a friend, right? We can do all of those things for ourselves. How many of you might start the coffee maker for your spouse before you leave and you're running out the door? Maybe you have your coffee, maybe you don't. Maybe you stop along the way, right? But you're not really taking a moment to just enjoy that cup of coffee. Maybe you pack lunch for your kids, but you're hurried and harried and you don't have time to make your own. Well, let's make time to make your own. So the things that you do for other people, the nice things, maybe you go out of your way. Maybe it's just a part of what you do. So instead of setting up, you know, let's say you have three children and a, a spouse, you're going to set up, you know, four lunches. Let's add that fifth, right? So you're going to make your lunch as you're making lunch for your family. You're going to do the things for yourself that you do for other people that you don't even think about. Um, the next idea is that you create a special space or place within your home that is yours. Maybe all it takes is a chair. Um, maybe it's moving a chair to a nice place that you can sit and drink that coffee. Maybe it is on the porch. Um, just creating a little corner. It doesn't have to be a whole room. It doesn't have to be a large space, but it, it's, a, it's a space within your home that allows you to just sit and relax and to be. Maybe that's where you meditate. Maybe that's where you do your deep breathing. Maybe that's where you drink your coffee in the morning. But it's a place where you can just sit and the, your perspective is, this is my place to recharge. This is my place to just be. Um, when we built our house three years ago, we have a kind of a Florida room off the back of the house. And I have a, a chair in that space. And that's where I do my Bible study in the morning. I, uh, you know, I read the Bible. I drink my coffee. And my family knows what I'm doing when I'm in there. And so there's a little bit less distraction because they know that, you know, mom's in her space. And I've made it comfortable for me. Um, now, you know, one side of that room is the breakfast nook for the, for my kids. And that's where they eat breakfast. But the other side of that room is mine. And, and it feels like a special place. The next idea <clears throat> is to move your body. I cannot stress the importance of moving your body. Now, you might say, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to go to the gym or my body isn't equipped for that. You know, I have injuries or, um, you know, there may be reasons why you can't move your body. I would invite you to consider what you can do to move your body. Maybe it's parking your car in the driveway and then walking down or parking your car in the garage and then walking down to the mailbox. Maybe it's parking just a few um, parking spaces further away from work or from the grocery store or school where you're picking up your kids. 10 minutes a day is enough to get your body moving, get some endorphins going in your body to, to filter through good stuff through your body. And here's the, here's the habit stack. 10 minutes of walking outside in the sunshine, meditative walking, while you're deep breathing, boom, you just did everything I've mentioned. You come home, you sit in your, in your special place and you drink some water to hydrate yourself. You've just habit stacked it all in 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Now in 2023 or 2020, when I wrote this, um, this blog, I left out one really important piece. And so I'm going to share that with you today. So if I rewrote, um, this blog today, I'd add a number seven, and that is rest. So many of us wake up running and we fall into bed at night and we don't take time to rest. The only way that our bodies, our physical bodies can reproduce the cells that it needs to produce in order to replenish and in order to repair and in order to um, be ready for the next day is through rest. You can do that through sleep. And I'm going to have a podcast coming up about sleep because I so often, when I scroll Facebook, especially early in the morning, 
I see posts from my family and friends that are, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning and they're commenting about their insomnia. So there's going to be a blog, a, a podcast here soon about sleep, but are you getting what your body needs for sleep? Are you taking opportunities to sit and breathe throughout the day? Are you giving yourself permission to not do that thing that you think you should do? Resting. We have to rest. Now, if you're just getting started with this whole self-care thing, I can put all of these together in, in one place. I just told you, right? You're going to 10 minutes, you're going to walk. You're going to do meditative walking. So you're thinking about the rhythms of your body as you're walking. You're clearing your mind. Um, it's quiet, just the sounds of nature. You're breathing. Um, you're getting that sunshine. You're going to come back. You're going to sit down in your chair, drink your water, and you're going to rest. So all seven of these can be done in a matter of 10 minutes. I invite you to find 10 minutes. And I, I continue to say this idea of invitation because I'm not going to tell you that you should do any of these things. We're not going to um, should on ourselves. Elisa Keaton, who's the founder of Revelation Wellness, the, the faith-based fitness ministry that I'm a part of, she talks about not shoulding on ourselves because who said, right? We're not going to put that expectation on ourselves. It's an invitation to consider adding this 10 minute routine into your day. You could play with it. And how can you take these things and spread it out throughout the day so that you're giving little moments of self care throughout the day so that you're feeling more, um, more energized. You're feeling, um, a little bit more ready to do the things you need to do for other people as well as do things for yourself. As I'm talking with you today, I'm, I'm thinking of ideas um, for more podcasts to come. And one of them that I just thought of was the power of no. Because part of resting and part of taking care of ourselves is having the strength to say no. Having the strength to say, I'd love to, but I'm unable to do that. Whatever it might be. Because every time we say yes to something, we ultimately ultimately are saying no to something else. So if we say yes to that extra task at work or that extra opportunity to volunteer somewhere, we're saying no to taking care of ourselves, most likely. So put these things on your schedule. Put them down, whether it's in your Google Calendar or um, if it's on on your paper calendar, I'm a paper calendar girl, write it down, make it a part of your day and make it an appointment with yourself that you cannot change. Opportunities throughout the day to take care of yourself. Because again, we are of no use to anyone else if we are not taking care of ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves. Our bodies are machines. And in the same way that we take our cars in for um, routine maintenance and we get gas and we fill the fluids and we do all the things so that our car continues to move and continues to get us from point A to point B. We have to do the same things for our body. And there's going to be more opportunities for us to talk about the importance of feeding and fueling and really honoring and taking care of this gift of this, this gift of a body that, that God has given us. But I would say, consider today just these handful of opportunities to begin to take care of yourself. Begin to rest, to fuel, and to nurture the body that you have so that you can then nurture those around you. Um, I've invited you to do this before and I'll say it again. Share with us opportunities that you have for self-care. Tag us on social media. Um, send us a DM. Feel free to shoot me an email, jennifer at hopehealingtherapy.com. Um, I'm always interested in new ideas for self-care for myself. And I think it's 
fantastic that we're, that we can share that with the community that we have here at Hope and Healing. So share with us. Um, if you have questions, if you have ideas or concerns, send them my way. I'm happy to engage in some conversation. I really just want to know that we're taking care of ourselves as we take care and serve those around us in our community. So thanks for listening and have a great day. Stay tuned for a few extra moments to hear all about our self-care staff retreat 2023 that took place throughout the small businesses of Southern Maryland. Afterwards, we'll hear from our staff members about their favorite things to do for self-care. Now here's Molly, our guest host and marketing intern. So we're walking from the Leonardtown Wharf doing the scavenger hunt for our self-care retreat. And do you want to tell the listeners why we do the self-care retreat? Yeah, so the self-care retreat, this is our fourth one that we've done. And when I originally thought about having like an annual get together for our staff, because we were not all in Leonardtown working together, we had some telehealth staff, um, you know, it just started to come to me that we work in jobs where we fill in to other people all the time and we have to refill ourselves. Mm -hmm. So this was an opportunity for me as the business owner to fill in to them, um, but also to have a little fun myself and to just give them opportunities to meet as a staff because they don't all work together in the same office and to just have an opportunity to kind of take care of themselves and have a little fun. And again, this is our fourth year doing this and I've been told over and over again that it's like the favorite day of the year. So it's really fun. Um, today we're doing a scavenger hunt, which is new. And uh, Molly and I have been chasing the teams around <laughs> Leonardtown as they compete to see who's gonna finish first. They don't know that there's no prize at the end, so that should be an interesting when we finish up. Um, but it's just been fun to watch them, you know, connect and chat and just have a little fun outside of the office because the work we do is really hard. Yeah. We're here at Antoinette's in Leonardtown, and this is Logan. Logan, what is your favorite form of self-care? I personally love getting facials or massages. It's like an hour of total peace and relaxation and I come out of it a whole new person. Yeah. So that's that would be my favorite thing. Sometimes it's not as easy to do, so I would say my second would just be taking a stroll around house. I like to do lots of different things for self-care. Uh, like reading, knitting, um, watching comfort shows and movies. Uh, exercising, taking my dog on walks outside, especially when it's nice outside. Um, I like to have lots and lots of options. I'm here with Sarah, and Sarah, what is your favorite form of self-care? My favorite form of self-care is being around the people I love and cooking, or whether we're out on the water, or just spending quality time together. Cool. My favorite self-care is going for a walk. I'm here with Anna, and Anna, what is your favorite form of self-care? My favorite form of self-care is going on runs, um, or I really enjoy cooking. Cool. Hi guys, my favorite thing for self-care is either reading a book or going for a walk outside. I'm here with Erica, and Erica, what is your favorite form of self-care? I really like to roller skate. Cool. My latest self-care favorite is boxing. I love going one-on-one -on -one with my boxing instructor every week. I look forward to it. I'm here with Jenny and Jenny what is your favorite form of self-care? I really like to go for our long walks and listen to the latest true crime podcast. Cool. I'm here with Kristen and Kristen what's your favorite form of self-care? I like to bake bread. It's very purposeful and satisfying and you have something yummy to eat at the end. Nice. I'm here with Jen Fifield. So what is your favorite form of self-care? Uh, I like to do less. That is honestly one of the best feelings is instead of filling my plate with so much stuff is just knocking things down either by finishing them or saying no to things. Mm -hmm. Other than that, actually walking my dog. Oh, I wow. love walking my dog yes. because it's an hour where I get to just chill, put in a podcast or mm -hmm. a book and I can um, just walk. Nice. We'd love to know what you love to do for self-care. So tag us on Instagram at Hope healing therapy wellness the next time that you do something for yourself that you'd like us to share on our socials.